Hi guys, welcome to your grade 8 and grade 9 analysis of exposure in preparation for your AQA English Literature Power and Conflict exam. Um, I think you should always start with the title of exposure because it gets missed out and there's quite a few different meanings in terms of seeing a lot about a little. It's a noun and it literally means the state of having no protection from something harmful. So obviously we know straight away from the poem that there's a foreshadowing that the men are exposed to something. Um, it's a physical condition as well, resulting from being outside in severe weather. Now we know that um, in our power and conflict poems that we are being shown that the, the natural world is more powerful than man. And in this instance, the severe weather is killing the soldiers rather than the enemy. It's also the experience of something. Now obviously this is a negative experience for the soldiers because they're in the trench. It's the revelation of something sacred. So again, if you think about your explanation so far of this single noun, this idea that something secret, especially something embarrassing or damaging, we can apply to propaganda. Remember that the soldiers are exposed to the awful lies of propaganda here and that they end up in a situation that they're not really ready for mentally or emotionally. Um, it's also interesting, the publicising of information or an event. So again, if you link that to propaganda and you link that to what happened during trench warfare, then the men are exposed to many frailties, not just the weather, not just the enemy, but also post-traumatic stress disorder. The origin of the word as well, I think if you can get this in from the early 17th century, you're hitting a grade nine already. Now, interestingly, the origin of the word is from the early 17th century, and it's from the word enclosure. Now, enclosure means trapped. Therefore, the soldiers, we already know from that single word, are trapped in the trench and unable to escape. And actually, there's something quite animalistic about that image there, an enclosure keeps you penned in. Um, I've said that already, so if you just needed a reiteration, then they are exposed to many different things. So make sure you try to analyse the title of this poem. Um, the next quote I'm going to take, and I always get on uh, get on my class about this because they always shout it at me. Um, Our brains eager, the merciless ice east winds that nigh us. It's not a judicious reference because every kid's going to see it. So we've got to make sure that our explanation is judicious. Now, what we want to do is move away from the obvious thing about the knife, and we want to look at ache. Now, ache is a verb, and it's a continuous or prolonging pain. First line of the poem, guys, we can see that they are going to suffer. More than that, it's going to be prolonged. This is a lengthy poem. Alternatively, though, it is an emotion experienced painfully and with intensity. So emotionally, the men are in pain, as well as the fact that mentally their brains are hurting. Feel intense sadness, obviously, that they're dying and seeing their comrades die. At the end of the poem, we've got uh, pause over half known faces. Again, in your analysis, an alternative interpretation is an intense desire. A desire, a desire to live, a desire to escape, a desire to get home. Going further, adjective merciless there it means that the weather doesn't show them any compassion or any forgiveness. Obviously, it's natural. Um, we see the power of the natural world here, um, and it links to nonchalance later about the wind. Again, it's something natural. Um, the, it's not premeditated, although it will be later in terms of one's description. Um, arguably, as well, the knife has been modified by merciless and made worse, if you like. Obviously, the knife, we know it literally penetrates the, the, the people. The soldiers are presented as very vulnerable there in the fact that they are being cut. Next quote is watching we hear the mad gusts tugging on the wire. Again, go with mad, adjective, literally, mentally ill, mentally insane. Remember the effect of post-traumatic stress disorder is that many of our soldiers return home and they are damaged forever, everlasting damage. And that links you back to the brain. But your next thing is that it can be foolish behaviour. Now, the foolish behaviour on this instance is to send the men into this battle, is to use propaganda to persuade them to go there. In a frenzied mental or physical state, absolutely, definitely want that. It is a mass frenzy being stuck in this trench, this enclosure that we've discussed from the beginning. And it's a frenzy because they don't, they are fighting for their life and the lives of everybody else at home. Very angry straightforward um, and remember we're being told as well not just about the soldiers there it's not just a parallel of the soldiers being mad but the wind is as well um, personifies the wind obviously links us back to merciless so the late uh, actually the wind has progressed from merciless wind to a mad wind the winds out of control um, is the man out of control as well you might want to make that synonymous link like I have that the madness is the men as well um, tugging I think you should definitely do it's pulling on something pulling hard on something. Now again, look at the origins of this word, and interestingly, it's associated with a horse's saddle. 
So again, you've got the connotations of something animalistic, which I told you about before in the title, Enclosure. And again, the weather, the war, conflict, it's all animalistic that we are fighting each other in this type of situation. Like twitching agonies is a simple simile, but again, we want to go to our single words, twitching. Uh, a short, uh, uh, sh sorry, a short sudden jerking or convulsive movement as if the men um, aren't in control of themselves. It's a, a sudden sharp sensation. Guess what? That's going to take it back to the open and line um, in the sense of they're, they're being knived. Um, again, go to the origins of the word if you can to pluck and to pull sharply. You can imagine that the men are being tugged in all directions. They are being um, pestered and it's incessant and it's constant. It also sounds like the men can't control themselves, they can't control their fate, they can't control what happens to them physically or mentally, and then again, they're going to descend in the madness or trauma. Um, sorry, I've said that. The poignant misery of dawn begins to grow, it evokes a sense of sadness and regret. Um, again, let's look at where our word comes from, and poignant I'm doing here. The, the poignancy comes from the word to prick, which I didn't actually know. So again, we want to start thinking about the being pulled, they're twitching, and now there's a pricking sensation. Again, it's pain, it's their body suffering. Um, and it also implies that the dawn is affected by the conflict of man. So our silly war um, is affecting the natural world, and rightly so, the natural world is also affecting us. When added to the personification of a growing, we say that misery is going to be extended. Remember what I've just said about prolonging pain. It's in the first line, our brains ache. Again, still dawn massing. Massing is a huge body of matter with a definite shape. So the day and the dawn is massing. The men are so bored that the days are tedious and they're getting longer. Um, also, it's a large number of people. So again, we've got this crowd of innocent soldiers who are being obliterated by nature, by, by the enemy, by everything, really. The weather is synonymous with the soldiers there, then this massing is synonymous with the, the weather massing, as well as the, the, the group of soldiers. Obviously, in that instance, they seem more vulnerable when they're a crowd. There's no individualized um, soldiers, there's no names. Everybody's clubbed in together, like the animals in the enclosure that I mentioned earlier. I am less deadly than the airships black with snow with side on flowing flakes that flow, pause and renew. Black, I've done this before in a couple of my videos, your obvious C grade student's going to see it synonymous with death, that's fine, but this is better. In the Middle Ages, black is synonymous with solemnity and authority. In this instance, the authority comes from the weather, comes from the snow. Um, so we can say that they're never going to win this fight. Mankind will never win a conflict with the natural world. And there's an animalistic quality again about the weather there. Look at flock, pause, renew. This idea that the weather is it's almost premeditated in an animalistic way. And it's, it's kind of like clubbing together to attack. Flock is a plural, isn't it? There's a lot of it. Um, and again, it's synonymous with this idea that the men are fragile and probably outnumbered here. Um, nothing as well, I think, you should link to stealth because there's an awful irony that the men don't realise um, that they are vulnerable and are being murdered by the natural world. Because remember, we've got that awful repetition of nothing happens. Now again, I would argue that every student's going to say that. If we can link nothing to stealth, as in there's nothing there, what's the worry? Then there's where the awful irony comes into play, that they haven't recognised the danger. Um, so I've said that. But also, again, for your extra analysis, there's a horrible, um, ho oh no, sorry, horrible connotations of emptiness. They are so lonely, and it's heightened there. And actually, the loneliness almost um, empowers this, this notion that they are unable to defend themselves. Um, I'm coming to the end, so stay with me. Shutters and doors are all closed on us, the doors are closed. If you're good with your poetry, you want your shazera there and your colon and that pause, which therefore means the doors on both sides are repeated. Metaphorically, you've got the idea that they can't go home. Um, symbolically, you've got the idea that they can't ever get what they had, i.e. the life that they had in the past. But actually, I think worse is that they can't ever have their dreams. So remember, these men are being ruined. Um, the closed doors could symbolise the notion of being trapped. You know, if, you, if you close the door on yourself, obviously you can't get out. And again, that takes you back to exposure and the word enclosure. Tonight is Frost will fasten on this mud and dust. Please check your anthology because um, my says, mine says his, yours might say this. So just check that boat. And anyway, this time we want the verb fasten. It has awful implications that the soldiers are unable to remove the weather. So the frost is fastened. Look at that awful alliteration there as well. Um, the fact that they can't get the frost off themselves. 
Also as well, you've got to start thinking cleverly with Owen's language here, we've gone to the present tense. So it makes it more poignant, it makes it more immediate. It's almost as if we become the, the soldier in this moment. Um, it's more urgent as well that they've got to get out or they've got to escape. But actually, this is telling us that they can't because they're going to be fastened to the mud as well. So you've got this idea that they're stuck and they can't get out. All their eyes are eyes. Again, it's probably an easy one to do, so you want to start thinking, well, where can I go? Metaphor, literally, the cold has destroyed the men. You probably want to talk about emotionally they've destroyed as well. There's a complete absence of friendliness is probably a better answer or warmth in manner and expression is a good little meaning. So actually, when you look on, the, look on their faces, um, they aren't friendly anymore, they aren't warm, there's no expression, it's a corpse, remember? Um, and we've got that awful line of pausing over half known faces and the idea that the soldiers either don't know their comrades or don't recognise them now that they're dead. There's also this awful idea of emotional detachment, that if we're, if we're in a war with one of our comrades, we don't emotionally get attached because they might die. Propaganda as well, if we're linking it to propaganda, propaganda shows no emotions for our men. Um, that was just the grade nine stuff of exposure because I think it's a wonderful poem just focusing on single words. But please check my lengthier video on structure and things like that. I hope this has been useful. Please check out my YouTube channel for anything else and massive good luck in your exam.